how's everybody doing so in this video I'm going to show you how I make my watch parts pins so we'll check it out so here I have most of the stuff laid out I've got my all my different watch parts I like to use my many you know many different types of parts some gears some larger gears and you know all kinds of stuff I've got my pin pieces um, some of this I've already put together like this top part I've already screwed it on um, these parts I've screwed this together I've put my spring on here just so I don't lose this stuff oh and I've already bent my watch face so this is a Frank Mueller dial um, basically how I bend the face is I have a punch kit so I got mine from PSI it's a pin disassembly punch kit and uh, I use this to take apart pins if they you know are broken or messed up or something I use this for all sorts of stuff hammering out stuff all kinds of crap anyway so what I do is I find the size of punch that matches the barrel size on your pin and once you find that you kind of take it this one for example you take it and then you line up your watch face and like these this one was super easy to bend I just put it on there and I kind of roll it around and uh, push real hard and make sure it's all nice and straight so I've already done that um, showed you kind of how I do it it's pretty easy um, once I have that together then I move on to the next part which is uh, getting the um, barrel ready so basically I have a little jig here I've made and this jig helps me like uh, hang things like hanging the uh, uh, barrels to dry once I coat them in CA glue they also uh, allow me to put a barrel on here and spin it or glue pieces on and then spin it this is just a simple thing I've kind of hacked together and it has two different sizes of dowel rods that I've drilled the holes in and just it's just it's just a cheap little thing I've kind of hammered together doesn't look awesome but hell it works so basically here's my uh, pin barrel and I've decided with this pin I'm gonna use um, the white fiberglass um, sleeve I just like the white so what I've done is I've taken my pin barrel and I'm gonna paint it white since I don't have any white barrels I went ahead and just took the one that it came with and as you can see I've painted it I've put two coats of paint on here so far I'm gonna wait for this to dry I'm gonna put another coat of paint and then once I get that done I'll show you guys what I do with the sleeves so until then see you guys soon okay so it's been about 24 hours and I've let this dry I'm gonna go ahead and take it off now when you take it off it should be a basically a solid piece I mean that glue sets in there and it has the it gets to the ends I mean a lot of people like to take these and hang them drip them off the bottom as well or flip it flip it around and drip drip the uh, CA glue off the bottom so the edge gets really clean but I've found that as long as I do it like this I glue it the way I showed you that the ends are good too I mean they're nice and solid you can fill it so then I take um, <clears throat> model car scissors um, you can buy these on Amazon they're like four bucks and they have a little curve on the end that's what you want I've learned this from other people watching other YouTube videos anyways they're curved on the end so you take these go ahead and cut off the biggest portion and then you want to start going in towards the uh, tube itself and you want to get as close to that tube as possible and using regular scissors or scissors that aren't curved 
you won't be able to do this. Um, you need the curved, the curved end scissors. And literally, just go on Amazon and search for model car scissors. So, anyways, you want to go ahead and get these trimmed all the way down to the edge of the barrel. So we can get ready for our next portion. And what I like to do is I actually leave a little bit hanging over the edge, just a hair, because whenever I get everything done and I get this cased in resin and everything and it's all dried, I will actually put this on my sander and sand the ends flush. That way, like any um, epoxy or anything that's kind of leached over the edge or anything like that, um, it'll all bring it flush, you know, flush right to the edge. I found that when I cut it right on the edge of the barrel in my other ones, that when I went to um, sand the end flush with a barrel trimmer, or not a barrel trimmer, I use a sander, but when I sand the end flush, it would go all the way to the barrel and it would actually cut the fiberglass down to where you could see the barrel a little bit and it didn't work right so I found just leave a little bit hanging over the edges and I mean when I say a little bit I mean just a little bit you can I think you can kind of kind of see sorry I'm trying to figure this out and yeah anyway you just go right there to the edge and you can see exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> so then we'll move on to the next portion okay so I took my top piece off of my little jig here so you guys could see everything so we've got the barrel the ends are trimmed down low <clears throat> I have bent the watch face I showed you guys that before and over here you can see I have selected already a bunch of um, parts that I want to try and use. Um, there's not an exact number or anything. I just went through and grabbed a bunch of the ones that I thought looked good. And then what I do is I use this piece of wood, the other dowel, and I take each piece and kind of bend it or form it around this because this is the same exact width almost, or uh, not width, but circumference as my barrel. So if I take each part and just kind of, you know, put pressure around them and bend them to conform to this shape, then they should be ready to go on here when I'm ready for that point. So what I do is I just kind of set those aside, get them ready to go. I get my watch face ready. Then I take my barrel and I put it on here. And what I'll do is I'll put a small amount of CA glue on the back of this. I'll go ahead and slide it on from the end because it is bent around the edges to where you can't just push it on there because it, it's, it's conformed to the same shape. So basically I'll have to slide it on like this once I get the glue on the back. Then that starts the process. Um, I'll wait for that to dry for you know a minute, and then I'll just go and start placing pieces um, one by one. What I do is I have a small pair of um, tongs here, real small pair. I got like a big set at Harbor Freight for like five bucks or something of these uh, oversized tweezers. And basically I'll take a little piece, you know, one at a time. I'll take it, I'll put, um, I'll drop the glue on here, wherever I wanna place it, just a tiny amount. Cause you just want the glue to hold these on. Like, you know, later on it's all gonna get cased in resin. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot of glue. So just put you a little bit of glue, find you a spot and then just kind of place it on there. Um, of course, I'm doing this for demonstration, but I just kind of, I'll set them on there wherever I want them to go. It's kind of hard to do this and film and talk at the same time, but just kind of set it down, say right there, 
you know, and just let it, uh, let it dry for a minute and then move on to the next piece. That's all you do. It's kind of painstaking and it takes a little while, but take your time, go slow. And in the end, I think you'll like, um, what you have. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll cut the video back on whenever, um, I'm ready for the next part. Okay. So I'm finished with placing all my pieces. I'll kind of roll it so you guys can see. I've got all sorts of pieces on there. Small ones, large ones, all different sizes and types. So the next part that I'm gonna do is, personally, I will take <clears throat> measurements using digital calipers. I um. I just like to take measurements at different spots. Um, because whenever you go to turn this, you need to know about how thick it is when you're turning it because you don't want the epoxy, you don't want to cut through the epoxy into your pieces and you know blow the thing apart. So what I do is I just try to get some basic measurements like in different spots, like I'll find the thicker spots on the blank, I'll measure them how wide they are, I write it down, and then I'll refer back to the stuff I wrote down whenever I'm actually turning the blank on my lathe. That way I can look at it and go, okay, right here it's about uh, 13 millimeters or right here it's 14 millimeters, so I need to watch out. It just kind of helps me. Like I can usually, um, when I turn it on the lathe, I can usually look at it and go, okay, I've, I'm really close now. I don't, I don't need to uh, shave off anymore. But sometimes I just need those um, references just to make sure. Like if I think I can go a little bit more, but I can't really see with my eyes how thick it is, um, I will refer back to that and just check them. It's a good way to do it, I think, in my opinion. So now what I'll do is, I'll go ahead and slide this through. And then I'll take, this is actually for this mold here. This mold here is actually for um, the Junior Series pins um, from uh, Turner's Warehouse, but they work um, to hold a lot of different pins. So see, as you can see, this top one's gonna fit in there perfect. So I'll go ahead and uh, just put this in there and get it ready to go. And then uh, when you guys come back, I'll show you my pouring process. Okay, so now we're gonna do the resin part. I've already got my uh, silicone cup on there and it's zeroed out. <clears throat> So I think I'm going to do about let's see about I think about 16 about yeah 15 grams 16 gram that work 16 grams each. Now this Alumilite Clear Slow is by weight. So you want to do it um, using a scale only. So then you need a pressure pot as well, um, which I could show you my pressure pot. This is my pressure pot. Um, this is a little thing I've made to uh, put down inside here so I can put several uh, sets of, of blanks in there and pressure them all up at one time. So here's my the top of my pressure pot and I kind of have it marked where it'll go back together and you fill this up with air. Um, that way uh, you have a gauge on here. So you add air into this end. I have an inline filter to filter out any water that might go through um, the air line. So I slowly open this up 
and compress um, the air that goes in here. It basically uh, pushes down against the Illumilite <clears throat> that's in here and gets all the air bubbles out. So you will need a pressure tank for a Luma Light Clear Slow. I got this one at Harbor Freight, it was a hundred bucks. Um, that's not counting the little fittings and stuff. But um, <clears throat> you also need a scale, a gram scale, if you're gonna do a Luma Light uh, Clear Slow because it's by weight. So the mix ratio is by weight. You can see it right there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, I can kinda show you guys. I've also put just a tiny dab in there. You can see that at the very bottom, just a tiny dab of blue pearl. Um, and I put it in there where it's still gonna make the uh, outside clear, but it will have a, a light pearlescent tint to it. So it'll kind of make it a little sparkly. It'll, it makes it look cooler in my opinion. So we'll just do that real quick. And also you need to make sure that uh, your air compressor is ready because as soon as I mix this stuff up, it has to go straight into the compressor because you have literally 12 minutes to get it in there. So we'll do that and then uh, I'll come back to you. Okay guys, so officially what happened was I got everything out of the mold. I uh, put it on my lathe and I started turning it. I wanted to show you guys what happened. Okay, so you can kind of see right there. I was turning it and a huge chunk flew out of the watch uh, blink. So... What it did actually was it caught and then it tried to lift up the plastic and actually, or the, the resin and actually separated the resin from the watch blank a little bit. So there's a line on the blank itself. So you can see, you know, the chunks taken out, but, um, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and try to sand out this missing chunk and uh, see if I can fix it. If I can, um, we'll continue and just see what it looks like. But this is a fail. This sucks. Um, this was going to be a beautiful blank. You guys got to see it. So even people who have been doing this for a while, um, you know, you still have mistakes happen. These watch pin, uh, uh, watch parts pins are pretty difficult sometimes. Um, so this is just one of those times. And I'll try and fix this. I'll try and get it back as best I can. And if not, we'll just uh, move on to the next one. So there you have it, guys. I'll go ahead and start working on this, and then I'll get back with you guys shortly. Okay, everyone, so I finished the sanding portion of the pin that we've been working on, and like I said before, um, it did have damage done to it. Um, it jumped, my uh, chisel caught maybe a small chip out or something within the blank. It caught it, and when it jumped, it jabbed down inside, broke a piece off, jabbed down inside, and then tried to lift the epoxy off the dial. Then, then it created a small bubble on top of the dial. So unfortunately, uh, I won't be uh, selling this pin. Um, I'll probably just keep it. Um, it's still beautiful, but it does have a bubble on the dial. Now, I intended for this video to be for people um, to just have a, an idea on how, uh, how to do this and how the, uh, what the process is and what all is involved in their pins um, to show you how much time and work goes into something like this. So, with that, I'm going to continue with the video. 
Um, and I'm going to show you guys uh, what happened. So this is, I mean, purely educational. And now it can show you that this will happen sometimes too. This is the reality. Um, I have little accidents all the time. Um, I've got a drawer full of uh, parts and pieces and odds and ends, stuff that is broken, stuff that is scratched. So if you're getting into wood turning or if you are a wood turner, then you know what I mean, and or you will in the future. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and show you where we're at with the pin, and then we'll continue on to the next spot. So right here, I went ahead and put it back on the jig. Like I said, I finished sanding it. Um, you can see tiny scratches where it's been sanded. And here is the portion, the bubble. You can actually see a small line right there. Now, I've done this long enough to know that when I clear this with CA glue, like I'm going to do now, um, that it will fill that and you won't see it. Um, normally, on a clear blank such as this, I would not clear it with CA glue. What I would do is you would get down to this portion where it's been finely sanded to 600 and then I would wet sand it with uh, my micro mesh pads. So micro mesh pads, um, they actually, my set looks like this. <clears throat> um, goes from 1500 to 12,000 grit. And after uh, time, it can be hard to tell the pads apart. So I mark them with little dots. One, two, three, four, five, you know, so on. But anyway, this is my little kit. Fill this full of water and then I wet sand. Um, but with this one, since it has scratches and I've had to sand the hell out of it, I'm going to CA this. And um, basically what I mean by that is CA is cyanoacrylate. Acrylate? Cyanoacrylate. <laughs> Sorry. And that's basically super glue. So what I'm going to do is put this back on the lathe. I'm going to coat it in CA glue, and then once that's done, once I have enough coats that I feel comfortable, and once this is filled in, and it looks good to me, and I think it's thick enough, then I will wet sand it. So, that's what we'll do next. And um, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything, uh, go ahead and leave those down below. Let me know what you think, and... Um, I'll go ahead and we'll continue on with this beautiful, now messed up uh, Frank Mueller blank. <laughs> Alright guys, and on to the next part. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do here is uh, show you how I do my CA finish on this uh, pin. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I put, um, I use some of this tape, blue painter's tape. Put it on my first two fingers and that's to keep the CA glue off my fingers and I don't want to waste gloves because it just eats through gloves like nothing. Uh, I'm going to be using Starbond Thin first and then uh, Tight Bond Medium. I know you probably shouldn't mix the two but I do it anyways because I'm low on uh, my Tight Bond Thin and so whatever. I'm just using them both. I've done it before and I have great results. Anyway, uh... So what I do is I have um, scraps of uh, shop towels. I have a little thing of shop towels over there I keep above my lathe. I rip those up and I uh, set them to the side. Um, I cut them into small squares and then I apply a CA finish and uh, turn it. So you guys are going to watch me do uh, the first couple of these and then we'll move on I think. So what I do is uh, I set my lathe on the slowest setting I can get which on my lathe is 210 RPMs and um, if I had it slower I would probably go slower but this works really good actually I've had great results so what I'll do is uh, go ahead here I'm gonna lift my light up a little bit and then I'll turn it back on okay so what I'll do is uh, with the thin I actually pour it onto 
the blank itself and then I'll uh, use my towel to go side by side. So we'll do this. That's my first coat. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, um, but as I can see, that already made a huge difference. I mean, it is just already that makes a huge, huge difference. That's one coat. Oh man, I wish that bubble wasn't in there. This would be beautiful. Anyway, it's still beautiful. <laughs> so we'll continue, uh, do a few more coats. Like I said, turn it on. I get a new piece of uh, towel every time. And what happens is that CA glue soaks through the towel. You can already see where it's stuck to the tape a little bit. You can see that. So that's why you use the painter's tape. I'm gonna put several layers on this because I want it to uh, be thick. So what, what else I'm gonna do is use the stick fast, the activator and just give it a spray. That way that activator dries it instantly. Um, so I'm keep moving on. Go ahead, get a new towel. Same thing. That's how I do it. Same thing. Sometimes I'll try to fold these towels up and use them twice. And, uh, you know, save some towels. But with these, I don't care. I have so many laying around right now that I'm just going to continue on to the next one. And so on. Alright, here's another layer. looking great and go ahead with the activator again and on to the next layer like I said before I want this really thick because I have a void in there from that little chip out so I'm gonna go to another layer I'm gonna activate it because I want to go quickly on to another layer and you can see see it smoking I don't know if you saw that or not. That's the activator working. You can see it smoking, smoking. Woo! See that smoke? <laughs> it's another reason you should do this in a well-ventilated area. You can see that. See that activator smoking off of that uh, paper towel. There you go. All right, so we'll let that dry for a second. And we'll move on to the next one. Now, sometimes in this, uh, in this part of the process, you'll look on there and your blank can sometimes get a little cloudy or get a, a couple of uh, shadowy spots in it. That's okay. Those will uh, come out when you wet sand. If you see a little uh, blemish or shadowy spot, just wait and when you wet sand, it'll come out of there. Okay, go ahead and do, I think, try this one more layer. Then we'll look at it. Hit it with the activator. Alright, so now I'll zoom you guys in. I mean, wow, and you can see that uh, I put a blue pearl in the clear epoxy. That was going to be a surprise um, for people to see. But uh, now I'm just so disappointed in that bubble. Breaks my heart. But the crack itself, you can no longer see it. It's filled with CA. The crack is gone. It just has that slight bubble. Um, and what we'll do next is uh, I'm going to actually give it a couple coats of medium CA. And then we'll move on to wet sanding. So the medium CA, my process is a little bit different. I'm going to put that back on. Um, the medium CA, like I said, tight bond, 
Shout out to Type Bond if you guys want to send me some of this. <laughs> I'll accept Type Bond, Star Bond, all you guys. Hell, I'll even do a video comparing the two. <laughs> and don't forget Stick Fast. Hey, you guys. All right. But anyway, shameless plug. <laughs> so with the uh, medium CA, it's a little bit different. The medium CA, I actually put it straight on the towel. Straight on here. I'll start at the bottom. It goes straight on the towel. Put a thick amount of it. And then I go down one into another. Just letting it build up. Get it on there. Spray some activator. And I'll go on to the next one. Let it build up. Back and forth. Hit it with the activator. Like I said, uh, if anything happens to it, like this looks like it got a little chunk on it. There we go, I scraped it off. Had a little chunk of glue stuck to it. Um, like I said, if anything like that happens, anything gets on it, um, don't worry, because at the end, like look, hmm. I'll see if I can get this on camera. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe if I remove the light. Yeah. Okay. See that? Right here on the... Uh, right here on this one. Hold on. There you go. So right there, you see that cloudiness? That will sand out. That will happen. You'll see it sometimes. Like, See how that one's nice and shiny? That's how it's supposed to look. Well, this one's cloudy. That's the CA glue and the activator. You know, sometimes it does that. Um, the best thing to do is just wet sand it and it'll come right out if you do it properly. So anyway, for that Frank Mueller, uh, Master Banker, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, be done with this portion and move on to wet sanding. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, wet sand it. Show you guys what I do. Of course, uh, here's my um, Wood River um, Woodcraft, uh, you know, um, micro mesh pads. So I've got it full of water. Um, also, I use distilled water because uh, I used to work in. Um, water years ago as a uh, water tester and I know that there are many uh, different types of sediment and stuff in the water at my home so you don't want any sort of sediment in the water that could potentially scratch your blink so I am only using distilled water I'm gonna turn my lathe up to uh, 1500 that's what I that's what I use to sand um, with micro mesh and I also use 1500 to sand um, with uh, regular uh, regular sanding pads or regular sanding strips. I always use 1500. I find that to be my magical number for me personally. Um, you know, other people might disagree with that, but uh, that's what I've found that works for me. I've had great results with that. And you can take it or leave it. So that's where we're gonna start. And this is what I do. Basically I take, um, this is all by feel. I don't have any super secrets or anything. I basically take the first pad, I make sure it's nice and wet. I come along, I don't press. I just start at one end, I do circles, and I work down to the other end. Then I go back down to the other end. Then I go back down to that end. Then I flip the pad. I get it wet. I start on this corner. On this corner of the pad. From one end down to the other end. Then I'll be sure and get those edges. Once I do that, I flip it again. Start at one end. Work my way down the other end. I don't put pressure on it. I just use the pad. I let the sand pad or the sanding pad do the work 
you press down on it, it's just going to take those layers of CA off. Also, you want to make sure there's enough water on there. Because you can actually see when, the, when it starts pulling up almost stuff that almost looks like a milk color consistency. That's the CA glue coming off and mixing with the water. You don't want that. I mean, you, you want it a little bit, but you don't want it to be just solid white. If this is real dark, solid white, that's a bad sign. That means you're taking off a bunch of that CA glue. And all those, layer that you, those layers that you put on, you'll take them right off, especially with these, uh, these more coarse pads in the beginning. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of do this a few times I try to go in circles small circles and I can feel it like I can I've done this so long now I can feel when there's uh, inconsistencies in the uh, finish I can feel it with the pad so when I feel that I'll kind of work those areas more than the rest of it so right now I'm liking the way it feels so far I'll shut it off um, always take one of these uh, strips and I'll wipe down this way I wipe with the grain or you know with the long ways with the epoxy and then you can actually look on here you guys probably won't be able to see it but there are tiny fine little marks in this everywhere which tells me like tiny little spots that are way shinier and then there's dull spots and shinier spots and they're it's almost like speckled and the way that I see this is it's the glare off my light shines on there and it shows me these little speckles everywhere in the finish that's why I know it's not ready to move on to the second pad so I'll turn it back on start again and I'll do this however many times it takes to get that first pad in my opinion the first pad that you use is the most important one in my opinion um, yeah, the ones in the end, uh, the pads on the end that do uh, that bring bring the uh, blank to life, those are very important. But it all stems from how you use the first pad and how deep you go with that finish. So what I like to do is sand until um, I can feel the difference in the blank in my hands. Use your hands, use your feel, trust your gut, trust your body. Um, when you can feel the difference in the blank while you're sanding, and then uh, once I feel that, that it's different, or I think it's been long enough, I'll shut it off, wipe it down, and check it again. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an even an even uh, discoloration all the way down the blank. So basically, after your first one, the blank is going to be uh, kind of dull. It'll be dull looking all the way down the, the blank. And that's what I mean by that is, it'll look clear to the naked eye, but when your light shines on it, you'll see a line all the way down the blank, and it should be like a dull line. And there should be no inconsistencies in that line that shines on there. And once you have a blank that has no inconsistencies, in that line that's reflected on there, then move on to your uh, to your 1800 grit or your next next grit in line if you're using micro mesh, which would be 1800. Um, once you do that, once you move on to your next grid, then after that, um, the pads I spend less less and less time basically with the pads. The first one, once I get that first finish done, the next the next few steps or the next uh, pads that go, you have you don't have to spend as much time as the very first one. Usually the first one, you spend the most time because it takes the longest to get that finish even. And then once it's even, you move on to the next ones and they, they go pretty fast after that. So usually it's the first one that's kind of a pain in the butt. Now I'm starting to feel it getting close here, especially right down here on the end. It's getting close. But remember, there was a blemish in this blank, so I have kind of like a little flat spot on this blank, but I'm not worried because you won't even see it once it's done. But I know it's there, so I know I'm going to have to work that spot a little more than the others. 
make sure you get the end pieces don't be scared to sand on those bushings if you're using bushings like this sometimes I turn between centers sometimes I use bushings it all depends on the blank and it all depends on what kind of pin for me personally I don't just do one thing every time I switch it up based on the blank and uh, the material all that stuff I take into account it's just a personal preference for me on what I do okay so now my line that I told you about that you'll see reflecting on here is consistent all the way down and it looks good I don't know if you guys can see that line okay maybe I can okay so see this there's like a white white line going from here all the way down and it's a reflection of the light oh well, let me try to try to help you guys get there we go okay so there's a line all the way down and that line now is consistent from this bushing to that bushing and there's like if there's any inconsistencies that uh, uh, line will break or it'll you'll see like a scratch or a dot or something that means you need to keep sanding until that line is uniform all the way down so there we go um, if you guys have watched other guys do this on YouTube then uh, they've other people mentioned that line before and that's the line they're talking about if if you haven't seen it before um, it's kind of hard to get that on camera I can't believe it actually showed up but I got it so now you guys can see it and I'm sure if you've done this before you know what I'm talking about but I just want to uh, teach anyone it's kind of like me in the beginning that didn't really have much uh, to go on that's all I'm trying to do is show people the way I do it I'm not saying I'm an expert or I'm better than anybody else because I think uh, I think I'm pretty good in my own sense but I'm not claiming to be some awesome pin maker you know I just do this because I love to do it it's fun and I want to be the best that I can be personally so I take uh, criticism and I, t I try to learn as much as I can from all the guys on YouTube like RJB Wood Turner and uh, uh, the guys over there at uh, Turner's Warehouse and uh, just Penn State all these you know and all the people um, with YouTube channels that do this sort of stuff so here we go we're on the uh, 1800 grit right now. I can feel a difference here. Like I said, you want to keep it wet. You don't want too much uh, cloudy, cloudy stuff coming off your sanding pads. Like I said, get those ends real good that go on the bushings. That's going to determine whether or not your pin uh components your hardware lines up nice and neat or if it's a good transition from the blank to the hardware make it look nice you know and you want the the shine to be uniform all the way down when somebody picks up the pen you want it to glisten in the light you want it to look good all the way down you don't want any flat spots or dull spots and um probably learning how to do a good finish has probably been my biggest struggle personally um, I've learned my own way now that's working pretty that has been working pretty good for me But in the beginning I was trying everything and, and it was rough. So now What I do uh, most people will sand um, After every grit they'll sand long ways too Okay, so I do that too, but I don't do it with the uh, first one the course 1500 I don't do it with that one because that one's so coarse that sometimes I find that it leaves um, deep grooves in there or deep scratches that I that I can't get out in the end So what I'll do is I'll I'll finish the second one, which is the 1800 grit and I kind of hold it a certain way And I just Slowly do this. I'm not pressing down. It may look like I'm pressing down, but I'm just holding the pad lightly and I'm turning my lathe by hand So I just go up and down I make sure that uh, it stays wet you know, I keep dipping it in the water. Go up and down. And you'll feel it catch on the ends. Like you see me getting it caught on the ends, but that's okay. Just do the best you can up and down like that. And what I'll do is set that to the side. I'll get me one of my little 
tear off pieces like these things are invaluable like I was saying before tear off piece I get a new piece every time when I'm wiping it down like this okay so now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my line I'm looking for it to be even all the way down and it's looking good I'm liking the way it looks right now we're doing great um, I'm gonna sand a little bit more but it's looking good okay so now oh and also whenever you're done with each grit make sure like I just used that piece to wipe it off but then I sand it a little bit again so I get a fresh piece again wipe it dry because you don't want any like little pieces of the previous grit of sandpaper to get stuck on there or to be on there for when you start sanding with your next grit because then you're combining grits and you'll get scratches um, that you can't get out because the grit is finer on the new pad the grit will be finer than the old grit so the old grit be a, like a big piece will get stuck on there and you'll scratch it and this grit won't take it out so you, you definitely want to wipe it every time. Make sure that it's dry before you move on to your next one. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm starting on one end, going to the next. This one, this pad here likes to, uh, at this point in the game, this pad here likes to uh, turn cloudy a lot. So you want to keep this one, the uh, 2400 grit, you want to keep this one wet it likes to turn real well like I said your goal is to not take off to not take off the CA finish your goal is to work the CA finish um, work it in a way that basically your your finish ha is gonna have scratches in it but the scratches get finer and finer to the naked eye to where they can't be seen anymore and it actually looks clear. Like even your 12,000 grit, actually 12,000 grit actually has tiny fine scratches that you can't see with the naked eye. It actually makes it look shiny but if you put that under a microscope it's going to have scratches in it. So basically that's all sanding and polishing is doing. It's getting those scratches out or filling in the voids of scratches. That's what polishing mainly does. So if you're polishing something, it takes that block, that polishing block or whatever, it takes whatever chemical is in that and basically fills the, the uh, microscopic scratch marks that you left with the sand sandpaper. It fills those marks and then buffs it out to look glossy. All right, I'm starting to fill. This one's filling pretty good. Yeah, this one's feeling real good. Okay, like I said, uh, I'm gonna sand up and down. And like I said, I'm putting on no pressure. No pressure. Uh, and you wanna make sure you keep it wet. Oh man. Yeah, that's looking great so far. Um, it's really hard with cameras. You know they they don't show the full the full picture you know people always look at my pins online that I post on my group or in my TikTok videos and stuff or my videos on YouTube they're like oh yeah those look great and then they see them in person and it's a totally different response it's like oh my god those are beautiful it's just because these cameras you know they they don't bring out the true beauty of a blink or of a pin finished pin Anyways, all right, I'm happy with that. It looks good, so I'm going to move on to the 3200 grit. Like I said, we're not pressing. Not pressing down. You just let the pad do the work. So when I first started using these micro mesh pads, I watched videos online of how to use them, and I kind of got the idea, but... I don't think I ever heard anybody that I watched tell me not to press down. Um, of course, I don't remember who, who I watched the first videos from, um, but basically I just started sanding gung-ho, like I just was pressing down hard and wasn't doing it right and I wasn't sanding uh, long ways in between grits and 
by the time I got done, I would still have these blemishes all in it. I just couldn't understand. I was getting so frustrated. Like, man, I have these pads and they were expensive and I've taken all this time and I can't figure out what it was. Well, it was, it was definitely user error. Um, as an electrician, like, I always tell other people, you know, don't blame your tools. You know, that's one of the things you always say. Don't blame your tools. You know, it's your fault. Um, but I didn't want to believe that, you know, but that's what it was, man. I just, once I figured out that these pads weren't designed to be pressed down and you're not trying to sand through it, you're just trying to polish it, basically. So you're just a light, you're leaning against it, basically, is what you're doing. All right, so do long ways. That's looking amazing. Man, I wish that blemish wasn't in there. This would be an amazing, amazing pin. That's all right. Let's see. It's looking good. Looking good. All right. Try this. Go ahead and wipe it off. And I'm um, take a look at it here. Liking it. Liking it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to move on to the 3600. Did I say 3600 before? I meant 3200 on the last one if I said that. So this is the 3600 here. Now, once you get to about this point, now you can really feel the blank through the pad. It gives a lot of feedback. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these and then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, we're back. And um, I sanded uh, to a final 12,000 grit. Now, I'm gonna do what I do. Some people may not agree with this, but I don't care. This is how I do it. Um, for this in particular, I'm gonna use plastics. Um, a lot of people do use this, but they just don't do it like this. This is the way I do it, and this works spectacularly for me. So I use Plastex, and then when I'm done with that, I will buff it. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, that's so crazy! Why would you do that? Because it makes an amazing finish. Now, some people would just stop at the Plastex or stop at the uh, micro mesh pads, but. I don't because I don't want to so you can judge for yourself so here we go what I do is once I'm done with micro mesh I go ahead and I coat that with the plastics I turn this up to I turn my lathe up to about 2200 then I hit it like I said I already put the plastics on there it was wet then there you know I use this like an old t-shirt and I rub the plastics on there then I turn it on then I slowly wipe it I do little circles I'm not pressing hard at all I'm barely pressing down barely I'm basically laying my finger against the blank I am using the uh, shirt to do all the work okay so there that has all the plastics on it. Now I'm going to get a clean spot once I feel like it's ran in or it's went in uh, pretty good. Then I take a clean piece and I just buff the whole thing off. I'll put a little bit of pressure. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Then I turn it again and I don't put any pressure. I just wipe it. Then I'll shut it off, wipe it down, and it's, I mean, it's spectacular right now. It's amazing. I'll show you. Um, pardon me, but here we go. Uh, actually, <laughs> let me see here. Let me take you out of this. There we go. You guys can see there's that little blemish which makes me so mad but 
the rest of it is just crystal clear there's not a single scratch on it it looks beautiful that Frank Mueller watch looks amazing all the pieces placed look amazing and uh, what we're gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna buff it I'll show you guys that okay so here's my buffing wheel I've already got a uh, I polish on there and I'm just gonna do this by hand. I have it turned up to 2500. Start at one end, work my way up and down, turning it. Okay, so, sorry that takes a little bit of concentration so it doesn't shoot the blank across the room. Um, so basically, why do I do that? So I do that because, yes, the plastics puts an amazing finish on it. But, once I run that buffer over this blank, I know for a fact that if there was any sort of blemish, anything it's gone and I mean you guys trying to it's just completely gorgeous just gorgeous sorry about that there you go just beautiful all right okay so we're gonna go ahead and press this We'll do is go ahead and put this together. My pin press. Got that. There's that part. Now I've already put this part together. Um, you know, with any pin kit, it you know, after a while you'll learn how to do it. But there's that piece. Now here's the whole shebang. There it is. So, sorry, I'm having hell with this camera. Uh, there we go. Maybe that will uh, show you what it looks like. Or here, I'll just pick it up. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There we go. And that's your Frank Mueller master banker uh, beautiful pin well first I'm gonna leave the tip covering the ink so whoever ends up with this can take it off and use it and there it is finished that's how I do it hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, long drawn-out video I'm not the best at editing sorry about that but uh, just trying to uh, uh, teach people what I've learned and if you want to comment subscribe whatever click all those buttons subscribe like the video because man uh, it really helps me out and you know I'd like to hear from you guys so drop me a message uh, comment on the video let me know what you think and see you guys later oh there you go <laughs> see you guys later